Woodbury Facial Soap. The beauty soap for the skin you love to touch. Your lovely never, never change. Keep that breathless charm. Won't you please arrange it? Cause you're lovely just the way you look nice. Woodbury, the makers of Woodbury Facial Soap. The beauty soap made for the skin alone presents The Adventures of Mr. and Mrs. North. The Norths have taken to going for long walks these autumn evenings. There was a time when Jerry toyed with the theory that if they remained quietly at home, trouble would never find them. But it did. So Jerry changed his plan. Decided that it might be wiser if Pan and himself made things a little more difficult for trouble by offering it a moving target. And so tonight we find the North in motion. Not a target, they hope, but definitely moving. Jerry. Hmm? Your legs are longer than mine. Mm-hmm. But mine are cuter. Are they? I must look sometimes. Oh, well, I'll stop. Mm, not bad. Not bad. Jerry, I'll have you know that my legs were considered one of the most attractive features at Miss Peters' finishing school for girls. Mm-hmm. Miss Peters certainly wasn't. She was a very dear old lady, although she was hipped on the subject of dates. Which reminds me, Jerry, tomorrow is Columbus Day. Is it? We must remember to send him a card. I mean, oh, Columbus Day. Columbus discovered America tomorrow. Tomorrow? Isn't he a little late? Uh, not tomorrow in 1944. Tomorrow in 1492. <laughs> that helps. Seems like only yesterday. Although he was really looking for India. Darling, I'm very proud of your education, but why although? Oh, stop that, Uh, Jerry, hmm. do you think there was anything between him and Queen Isabella? Sure, King Ferdinand. <laughs> <laughs> they say the Nevada climate is wonderful at this time of year, especially in Reno. What grounds would you claim for divorce? Mental cruelty, that's your I could easily but... do worse. For example, <laughs> I might say something about his carrying along a pinker for Nina. Oh. See? Darling, I believed you when you said you could do much worse. You didn't have to prove it. Well, as a matter of fact, I thought that was pretty good. Let's see. Oh, Jerry um... North, if you're trying to think of another one of those awful jokes, you could... Oh, they're not that bad. And what's the matter? I just saw a man jump out of a window. You what? Dropped in that alleyway right ahead. Are you sure? Yes, darling. Oh, he's in a hurry. The only thing, darling. Yeah? He looked like... Jerry, I'm not making this up, and I'm not crazy, because it's your Aunt Agatha who's eccentric, and I haven't touched the drop. And what did he look like? Christopher Columbus. Like a... Oh, no, darling. Columbus is dead. He discovered America tomorrow in 1492, and... This is the alleyway. Honestly, Jerry. Somebody's coming out of it. He couldn't have been hurt. I'm on a dark end. There he is. No, I, I've got it. Oh, let me go, please. A little second story work, friend. Come out here in the light. Yeah, let me go. I'm in danger. My life's in danger. Take Please. it easy. Take it easy. Who are you anyway? I'm Christopher Columbus. You're... Oh, no, you're not. I went to school. We'll... we'll get you out in the light. Jerry, he is Christopher Columbus. Look. Hey, go. I got to get away. That's like Columbus. Resemblance, but why do you have to get away? They're after me. They'll kill me. Why? Because they want the jewels, don't you see? What jewels? The crown jewels, of course. The ones the queen gave me. Jerry, the queen. Isabella. Yes, Isabella. I don't like to do this. Oh. Jerry. Oh, darling. Did he hurt you? No. I just like it down here. Oh. Your jaw, darling. A mere nothing. That lump on it probably becomes me. We've got to notify the police. Sure. I'll tell them Christopher Columbus stalked me. I don't know what the visiting hours at Bellevue Psychopathic are, darling, but you'll find out. Well, I can back up your story. Sure. Then we'll have adjoining padded cells. What happened to good old Chris? Oh, he ran up the street. I didn't notice because I was so worried about you. So am I. About all I need for my mental health right now is to see Queen Isabella yodeling at me. Yes. Huh? If you look up at that building... Yeah? You will see Queen Isabella. What? I... I... Leaning out of the window. Sam, I'm seeing it, too. That's the window Columbus jumped out of. Maybe King Ferdinand got home too soon. Oh, no, Pam, this is impossible. We've got... The light went out. The light went out. And there are about a million windows in that building, and both Christopher Columbus and Queen Isabella have been dead for about 400-odd years. And we're Pam and Jerry North, and we're going right home. That is, if we still have a home, which I'm beginning to doubt on account of maybe we haven't been discovered yet. Uh, taxi! Well, all I can say, darling, is maybe Columbus discovered America. But it took us to discover Columbus. 400 years later, uh-huh. Get in, darling. Right. Anybody in there already, like George Washington, maybe? George or... Washington's birthday's in February. Oh, of course. I could be expected to see him tonight. 
Uh, driver. Yes? 24 St. Anne's Place. And don't go around the Cape of Good Hope if you can help it. Cape of Good Hope? Where's that, Brooklyn? Uh, it could be. You better get started. My wife's a little upset. Ah, uh, fine, huh? Well, not exactly. As a matter of fact, I'm a little nervous, too. Is that so? Me, I got names like I am. The rest of the little woman says to me, you got names like I am. Why am I got names like I am, I says that? On account I eat carrots. You eat carrots? Uh, sometimes. I eat them all the time. How about you here right now? You like one? Oh, no, thanks. Uh, because of ghosts. What's ghosts got to do with it? Well, if you eat a lot of carrots, you can see in the dark. And if you can see in the dark, you can see ghosts. And if there are any ghosts, I'd rather not see them. So I... Hey, what happened? Looks like some guy decided to take a nap in the middle of the street. I'd better waken him on account of an ain't healthy. Jerry, is everybody crazy or is it just the people we need? I don't know. I wouldn't care to go on record. Hey, how are you two? Yeah, what is it? I would like you to step out take a look at that guy in the middle of the street. Why? Is there anything wrong with it? I ain't saying until you two see him too. That is, if you see him. All right, Sam. Come down. You couldn't wake him? I, I wouldn't even try, mister. There's a possibility he ain't there. Maybe there was something in them carrots. Miss, uh, I don't know, but... Uh, do you see him? Jerry, it's... Aha. Uh, uh -huh. You see him too, lady. Yes, I'm afraid I do. Oh, and... Uh, does he look dressed a little peculiar to you with maybe tight and funny shoes? He does. And furthermore, lady, does he remind you of somebody that maybe you ain't personally acquainted with but you've seen before? You mean Columbus? Lady, that is exactly what I mean. Christopher H. Columbus. I've had a look at him. Is he Columbus? Maybe, but sleeping? Not exactly. I tried to wake him, but I'm afraid he isn't going to wake anymore. You see, somebody just cracked Miss Christopher Columbus's skull for him. Oh. And he's quite dead. Again. The adventures of Mr. and Mrs. North and the Woodbury Facial Soap program will continue in just a moment. But first, this is Ben Growl with the story of the exciting wartime romance of the lovely Woodbury dead, Patricia O'Neill Goodlett. As soon as you hear the story, you'll know why Patsy never neglects her daily complexion care with Woodbury facial soap. It seems that Navy Lieutenant George Goodlett had a letter of introduction to beautiful Patricia, but no time to present it when he went through town. He did, however, take time to notice the sweet, fresh loveliness and radiant complexion of the motor corps volunteer who drove him from the station to his boat. The Navy Lieutenant was very impressed. And yes, you guessed it. The pretty volunteer turned out to be Patsy herself. There was a very fast courtship, when George returned from the South Pacific, and soon her friends were giving bridal showers for lovely Patricia. Now, the romance of that particular Woodbury Deb is a tribute to the cherishing, beauty-giving care of Woodbury facial soap. It gives your skin gentle, thorough care, protecting your most precious, winning charm. And Woodbury soap can do that because it's a true complexion soap, made in cake form only. It is made for the skin alone, by famous skin specialists, and particularly important to your complexion loveliness, Woodbury contains a special ingredient for special mildness. Now, girls, don't wait another day, but begin right away with Woodbury. Let it make your complexion so fresh, so soft and smooth that you're bound to win the heart of the man who matters most. Ask for Woodbury, W-O-O-D-B-U-R-Y, Woodbury Facial Soap, Beauty Soap, for the skin you love to touch. <laughs> And now, back to the Woodbury Facial Soap program, The Adventures of Mr. and Mrs. North. Can a wagon come, sir? Bill, Sam. Oh, hello. What is it this time? It's a murder, Bill. Uh, with an oars, what else would it be? All right, who got killed? When, where, why, and who did it? Well, I'm afraid, Jerry, and I don't know the answer to all those questions. Okay, we'll start with the court. Oh, Christopher Columbus. Who? Christopher Columbus. I thought that was what you said. Sam, have you been eating all the olives and Jerry's dry martinis again? Jerry will tell you the same thing. Why not? He's been drinking them. Now, Sam, who is you? Christopher Columbus. How would you like yourself added into the race? Honestly, Bill, I'm not joking. No? Well, if you found the corpse in Columbus, Sam, then America hasn't been discovered yet. There's no New York. The telephone hasn't been invented, and I'm going to sleep. I mean to work. Bill Wigand. We found a murdered man on Central Avenue and 12th Street. You'd better send a policeman down. Oh, no. For this one, I'm coming myself. 
Oh, thanks, Bill. Jerry and I'll be waiting for you. Bye. Hey, au revoir, Pam. Oh, let me add one thing. Yes? You and your husband go around picking up bodies 400 years old. You'll have to keep them yourself. <laughs> Christopher Columbus in the morning. Connie will like him. Connie likes all his guests. He's never had such an historical one before. Or oh, one dead for so long. Seriously, I, I wish you knew who he really was and why he was in costume and made up to look like Christopher Columbus. Tomorrow's Columbus Day, Bill. He's probably taking part in a play or something. Uh, I guess so. Think he was murdered because he was a bad actor? He wasn't supposed to be murdered, Bill. He was supposed to have been run over accidentally. If our taxi driver hadn't had such good eyesight in the dark... Do the eating carrots all the time. He would have run over Columbus. And then that gash in his skull would have been attributed to the car. Uh-huh. I personally am going to send a bushel of carrots to that driver. Well, there's nothing more to be done tonight. I hope. Mm-hmm. No, Bill, I don't think so. You see, he must have been murdered for tomorrow. In the same way that Columbus discovered America tomorrow? Uh, yes, Alan. Tomorrow is the important day. Well, we should be able to find out who the guy really was by then, why he was running. Well, maybe, Bill. Why he had to be killed tonight. <laughs> Pam. Hmm? Coffee. Mm-hmm. You're pouring it, dear. At least you were about to. I know. Jerry, in this case... I like case... breakfast. Some morning I should love to eat one. But, darling, it's important. There's an article in the paper about the Columbus Day celebration, and it mentions the fact that the famous jewelry firm of Arcady is staging a tableau about Columbus. Let's see that. Hmm. They're putting on the scene with Queen Isabella hands over the crown jewels to Columbus to finance his trip. And they're using their finest and most valuable jewels in the tableau. Good publicity. Maybe, darling. It wasn't good for Columbus. You mean last night? Mm-hmm. Of course, there must be a connection. He said something about the jewels being in danger. Oh, well, the devil with breakfast. I've never managed to get a real one in the past. Why start now? Then we're going... To Arcady, the jewelers of distinction. Not to mention, I suspect, the jewelers with a cost to explain. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Mr. Winter. You wanted to see me? Uh, my name is Del North, and this is my wife. How do you do? Well, how do you do, Mrs. North? I just married, eh? <laughs> a gift for the bride, young man. A necklace, by it. I'll have one of mine mentioned. I'm the sorry, bed. Mr. Winter, but we haven't come to buy anything. We came to you because you're manager of Arcady, aren't you? Yes, yes, I am. There was an item in this morning's paper about a tableau that Arcady Jewels is putting on as part of a Columbus Day celebration. So we are. So we are. Well, I'm afraid we have bad news for you. If your Columbus is missing, I've never had a Columbus in my life. What? Oh, you mean Spindrift. Do I? Head of the buying department, Spindrift is. Best man we have on the phrase. Looks like Columbus. What about him? Where is he? Oh, how should I know? Had some silly rehearsal last night. Won't be in till later. Mr. Wendell, I'm afraid Mr. Spindrift isn't coming in at all. You don't mean he's left the firm? No. Mr. He's left... Wendell, where is Spindrift? Why does he answer his phone after jumping out the window last night? <coughs> I'm very busy, trying to run along. Oh, perhaps, uh, Mr. I'm Sandra Stone. Yes, of course. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. North. Mr. Oh, detectives. I'm sure that's exactly what we needed. Oh, Mr. Winters, you're so clever for having gotten touch with you so quickly. Still, Sandra. I would. Now, Mr. North, you are saying that Spindrift isn't returning here. Why? Because he's dead. Dead? Well, well, I... Dear, that's the most inconvenient. We shall have to find another appraiser. Which young man is no easy thing to do? And furthermore... We have we... no Columbus. We have no... Good Lord, Sandra, be still. I won't be still. Hank's all up his publicity. He's done to his head, Hank's publicity man's are awkward, and I love him. Sandra, this and is no place for discussing affairs of a heart. I'm not, but the firm will just have to do the tablet. Well, think of somebody else. He didn't consider the Spindler to die just at this time. He had no particular choice in the matter, Mr. Wendell. He was murdered. Sh- what? There was something else. He was worried about the jewels before he was killed. Are they safe? In our vault, young woman, no danger there. Then Pam was right. The day was the reason for the murder last night. Yes, sir. I beg your pardon. Mr. Wendell, we've got to get another Columbus. I know. Oh, he's just the same size as Kendrick, and he's much more handsome. So what's Columbus? And he'll be glad to do it because it was all his idea. And, oh, Mr. North, don't you think that's a wonderful solution? Well, perhaps for everyone but Kendrick. However, it is possible. Oh, Pam. Uh, oh, hi, Pam. Uh, goodbye. Yes. Goodbye. Oh, uh, just goodbye. one thing, Miss Stone. When Hank wants to pick up the Columbus costume, I'm afraid he'll have to apply at the morgue. Bill. Oh, hello, Pam. 
hired, Jerry. Hello, Bill. Everything set? Yeah, the place is guarded by a dozen men. Winnell's going to open the vaults in a moment, turn the jewels over to Hank Sawyer, the guy who's playing Columbus. Then these guards will escort Sawyer and Miss Stone. Queen uh, Isabella. All right, Queen Isabella to the hall where they're doing the stunt and on the float on which they're going to the hall. The instant the curtain goes down on the tableau, Wendell's arranged for an armored car to take the jewels back to the vault. Well, that seems to take care of everything, doesn't it, Bill? It is better. I'm pretty sure it will. I suppose Thunder's murder will have to wait till after the jewels are returned safely. But since he never had the jewels, I can't understand why he was killed. Well, it might have been. Oh, here comes Hank Sawyer now. Well, I guess Connie finally parted with the Columbus costume. Mr. Sawyer. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Norris. Hello. <laughs> the man down the morgue seemed to think I was trying to rob a friend of his. Oh, Connie loved all his corpses. You look very well in that costume, Mr. Sawyer. Oh, thanks. I guess I'd better run, though. I'm a bit late. See you later. Window's opening the vault. He's giving Hank the jewels. Oh, Jerry, that's gorgeous. Restrain yourself, my love. I can't afford them. Not even one? I can barely afford to have you look at them. Bill. Now, there they go. And we're going with them every inch of the way. It's a wonderful parade, Jerry. Uh-huh. We should be getting to the hall soon. Couple of minutes. Hank looks beautiful as Columbus, doesn't he? That pile of jewels in his hand looks even more beautiful. Besides, I prefer a thunder. Oh, she's too thin. Mm, not necessarily. Uh, I mean, uh, so is Queen Isabella. Was she, Jerry? Oh, sure. Yeah. My uh, interest is purely historical. It had better be. Otherwise, your existence will be uh, past history, darling. Pablo is exquisite, Jerry. Uh huh. With 12 policemen surrounding the stage, it's also protected. Seems to be almost over. Let's just that. Right. Uh, just on the idea. Through this door. There. Oh. Hello, Bill. I'm almost over, huh? Yeah, yeah. Two seconds. All right, boys. On stage. It's a window. Yes, right behind you, Lieutenant. Uh, we'll get the jewels, escort them to the armored car, and then that will be that. I hope so. Ah, oh, there, Hank. Come on, Mr. Wendell. I bet you blow. Look. Never mind the tableau, my boy. The jewels, please. Oh, good. Oh, Here we are. Safe and sound. Hank was absolutely the handsomest Columbus I've ever seen. What? What's the matter? What's matter? These, these things you gave me, young man. What about? They happen to be false. Oh, are you two still here? Yes, Bill. What, uh... Um... the jewels Sawyer gave Wendell our phony. He's going to stay in jail for a long time, and maybe not for so long. What do you mean, Bill? Sendrick. You think Hank murdered him? I don't know yet, but we'll find out. Bill, are you sure? Now, look, Jerry... From the moment Wendell handed the jewels to Hank Sawyer, from the moment he handed them back to Wendell, Sawyer and the girl were under constant watch. And you believe Hank Sawyer did it? Of course. Now, here's the way I figure it. Sawyer killed Spender because he knew he himself was the only guy around who could fit the costume and play Columbus in the tablet. He had a perfect setup. He could swipe the jewels, substitute the phonies, and clear out. Two things crossed him up. You and Wendell spotting the phonies immediately. Bill, can Tam and I see Hank for a minute? Well, why? Because we have a hunch. We were talking about it while we were having lunch. We also paid a visit to the five and ten. Well, to yourselves, you two probably sound logical as anything, but to ordinary people... Okay, I'll have him brought in. Now, mind if I stay? Oh, no, Bill, because you may have to be a witness. I wish I knew what for. Uh, Julie, bring Sawyer in. Any objection to telling me exactly what you bought in the five and ten? <laughs> Please, Bill. Just imitation jewelry. Wait, uh, don't say anything. Oh, Hank. Uh, well. Hank, did you steal the jewels? Of course I didn't. You think I'm crazy? <laughs> what do you think these are worth? What? Huh? I don't know. I don't know how much they're A thousand dollars for a mecca. Looks all right. Listen, uh, you didn't call me in just to discuss the jewel business. No, Hank. As a matter of fact, we're through. So long. So long, Bill. Hey, now wait. Where are you going? Home. To see. What about? Well, for one thing, why Columbus was killed. And for another... And for a third, where was Ferdinand when Isabella handed over the jewels to Christopher? (laughs) 
The adventures of Mr. and Mrs. North and the Woodbury Facial Soap program will continue in just a minute. First, in a small home in Westchester, the other evening. Good night, sir. Good night. Why, dear, what a thing to do. I don't care. This always goes out with the nicest boys and to parties and things while I... I'm just as pretty. There, there, Jean, of course. But, darling, Mary's complexion is... Jean, why don't you try that special complexion soap that Mary's been using lately? Let's go upstairs right now and give you a, a Woodbury facial cocktail. You know, they do say the facial cocktail is the beauty care of all these pretty Woodbury guests. And how delighted young Jean must have been after her first Woodbury facial cocktail with Woodbury facial soap. You see, the Woodbury facial cocktail is the before-date beauty care of the Woodbury Debs because it helps make your skin more appealing right away. You just pat Woodbury's creamy lather into your skin, rinse with warm water, then cold. Then when you look in your mirror, you see that your skin is brighter. It has soft, glowing radiance. And you're ready to meet your date or romantic face, knowing that your complexion is sweet and fresh all smooth and nice for his eyes. Begin tonight with Woodbury, W-O-O-D-B-U-R-Y, Woodbury Facial Soap, beauty soap for the skin you love to touch. And now, back to the Woodbury Facial Soap program, the adventures of Mr. and Mrs. North. More bacon, darling? Uh-huh. Oh, this breakfast is one I'm going to finish. <laughs> because we know who killed Columbus, and why, and how the jewels were stolen. And... Oh, Pam, you answer it. All right, darling. Hello? Yes? What? What did you say, Bill? You did? Oh, oh, but you shouldn't have done that. Because he didn't. And since he didn't, he, he will be. What? Oh, no, no, never mind. Goodbye. Jerry, they believe Hank. Good Lord. Come on, darling, we've got to hurry. But your breakfast. Tomorrow, maybe. Tomorrow in 1994. Hurry, Pam. I am hurrying. Oh, I do wish Hank lived in an elevator apartment. He went to the office after leaving jail, then was supposed to go home. We may be in time. Jerry, why was he released? Because his lawyer pointed out that although he may have been the only man who could have stolen the jewels, according to the police, the police themselves would be forced to alibi him. You mean because they'd have to swear that he had no chance to hide the real jewels anywhere or, or to get rid of them? Mm-hmm. Well, we're on his floor. In the corridor. Hank, he's going into his apartment. Oh. Hank! Hank, oh. hey, stop! Quick, hit the floor! What? Down, you fool! Hey! You knocked me down! Well, if you, I did. Yes. Stay away from the door, Pam. We're all right. I don't think there's going to be any more shots. Our voices would have been heard. Uh-huh. All right, Hank, get up. Hi. Guess you saved my life. I never mind that now. Come on in. There's no one... Oh, <gasps> excuse me. Sandra. I didn't fire any gun. I don't even know how. What's those they came from that window behind me. I couldn't see. I was so afraid. I screamed. And... Oh, Hank, I love you. I Suppose do... we save all that. <laughs> We're going to see the man from whom these jewels were stolen, Sandra. <laughs> Maybe you'll be able to explain to him. Or maybe not. Well, this is very late, Mr. North. My butler wakes me, but I... I'm know sorry, it's... Mr. Windle, but we needed your help to clear up this business of the evils and send us murder. Could have waited till morning. I'm afraid not. Rubbish. Well, I see the police have released you, Hank. Yes. Mr. Windle... Is that really news to you? What? Or do you usually sleep in pajamas in your suit suit? Huh? Oh, that. Well, I hate slippers. You see, never wear anything. Look here, young woman. And never mind that. Mr. Wendell, the key to the whole problem lies in the murder of Sendrick. Why was he killed? Mr. North, if you wake me at this hour, do I... I'll to... tell you why. Because then Hank would have to play Columbus. That proves his guilt, doesn't it? Oh, no. Because, you see, the police can swear that he's innocent. He'd have disposed of the real jewels because he was watched all the time. They could have disposed of the real jewels. Not even found. I'm sure, Mr. Wendell, that's a never real jewel. What? Too mad. No. Remember I said the real key lay in Sendra. We now can realize he had to be killed. This is the me. reason was, expert. Sendra recognized that the jewels you handed him, Mr. were false. 
And we proved that Hank could sell real jewels from false ones in front of Lieutenant White. Oh, Before fantastic he... theorizing. Hardly. You don't own Arcady. You just manage the place. Therefore, a perfectly sound motive. Ridiculous. And there's another reason why we know it isn't all theory. You see, when you tried to kill Hank on his release from jail... Are you out of your mind? In order to make sure he didn't stumble on the true explanation, Sandra saw you outside the window. That's impossible. It was too dark. That and... missed the window, does it? Especially since Sandra really didn't see you. <sighs> Home at last. Mr. Wendell's in jail, and Hank and Sandra in love. Oh, it's going to be so good to see. Mm-hmm. And not so fast, my little prairie flower. Mm -hmm. Into the kitchen with you, my love. Oh, but Jerry... It may be midnight. We may have solved the crime. Other people may be fast asleep or having a late snack. But, darling, we're the North, and so we're a little crazy. And so, by heavens, midnight or not, I'm going to have my breakfast. <laughs> Tune in again next week at the same time for another adventure of Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Alice Frost and Joseph Curtin. For thrills and laughs, be sure to listen, won't you? Music for Mr. and Mrs. North is conducted by Charles Paul. Here's a thrill you can't afford to miss. It's a half hour packed full of laughs, chills, and thrills. Don't miss the new Woodbury comedy mystery program starring Gloria Blondell and Carlton Young over another network starting this Sunday. That's Sunday, October 15th for Hollywood Mystery Time. Don't forget, consult your newspaper for time and station. This is Ben Grower saying goodnight for Woodbury Facial Soap, the beauty soap for the skin you love to touch. Never change. Keep that breathless charm. Won't you please arrange it? Cause you're lovely. Just the way you look tonight. This is the National Broadcasting Company.